Hey guys, it's Krista here, and I am going to talk about the books I read this week. This one I actually read a couple weeks ago, but I noticed I didn't tell you guys about it. It's called The Serpent Sea by Martha Wells. This one is the second book in the Books of Raksura series that she's written. The first book is called Cloud Roads. And um, I really enjoy these uh, books. It's about Moon, who is a Raksura. He um, can become Groundling, where he can walk on the ground, or shift into uh, Raksura, which has wings. And he has been trying to find a home of his own, and he finally comes across a group of people that are willing to accept him and take him in. And now, in book two, they are traveling to find a new a uh, new home to live in and when they get to the home it turns out that the seed that makes the tree magic that they can live in it has been stolen so book two is about the quest that he and some of the other um, people go on to locate this magical seed so that they can stay in their new home and I really do enjoy these books um, I gave that one four stars another book I got from NetGalley I'm not sure if you guys have heard me talk about Suzanne Johnson here before but she does a lot of giveaways and stuff on her website uh, Preda Natura and I really enjoy talking to her on Twitter but her um, urban fantasy book is coming out in April and uh, it's available now on NetGalley it's called Royal Street The, the description says, As the junior wizard sentinel for New Orleans, Drusilla Jaco's job involves a lot more potion mixing and pixie retrieval than sniffing out supernatural bad guys like rogue vampires and lethal were creatures. DJ's boss and mentor, Gerald St. Simon, is the wizard tasked with protecting the city from anyone or anything that might slip over from the preternatural beyond. The Hurricane Katrina hammers down on New Orleans, fragile levees unleashing more than just the dangerous floodwaters. The borders between the two, um, between the modern city and the other world crumbled. Now the undead and the restless are roaming the Big Easy and a serial killer with ties to voodoo is murdering the soldiers sent to help the city recover. To make it worse, Jerry has gone missing. Wizard Elders have assigned a grenade toting assassin as DJ's new partner, an undead pirate, Jean Lafitte, the hard way that the loyalty requires sacrifice, allies come from the unlikeliest places, and duty mixed with love creatures, one bitter gumbo. But overall, I mean, I really did enjoy this book. I did end up giving it five stars. I was really surprised at some of the things that, that happened in the book because I really didn't see them coming. I like the fact that it took place in New Orleans in a time that we... Um, you know, can relate with that, you know, Hurricane Katrina has hit and there is some voodoo magic going on as well as this 200 year old pirate's kind of got a mouth on him and he's kind of gropey. And, um, there's not tons of romance or sex in this book at all. There's like a, a little bit of, you know, romance at the end. I thought it was awesome and I really enjoyed that. So I think you guys should, um, check that out. I love the main character, DJ and her partner that comes into the story. Uh, next, I listened to, well, I started listening to the audiobook for Daily Departed by Leah Habel. And um, I liked the first, I liked maybe the first three CDs or so. But then I, they started having characters and narrators that I really, I didn't like listening to them. So I ended up pulling out the physical book instead and I still didn't really just get into this book as much as I was hoping to. There are five different point of views that are being relayed in this book. So the chapters are jumping around from different characters' perspectives. Some of the characters, I didn't love all the characters that the perspectives were told from. So I did find myself kind of, my mind was wandering through certain chapters and I just, I didn't really care what was going on in them. So, and I really hate to say that because I really, really wanted to enjoy the book and I think the, I thought Nora was a fantastic character. I loved her. And, but the only other thing I really liked about the book was this take on zombies. There's, there was different, um... There's different stages of being a zombie. There's new zombie to, you know, this animalistic 
kind of just non-thinking creature. And I kind of like the idea about that. This takes place in the year 2195. Uh, the world has uh, gone through several different changes, wars and whatnot, and this is takes place in New Victoria, which is down near the equator. Taken on the old Victorian way of life with the etiquette it takes place in a futuristic setting futuristic setting but yet we've gone back to lesser times where women do marry for any kind of a status social status and so I uh, didn't like that too much but as far as the situation goes Nora was a fighter she's awesome she kicks butt you know and she she's a good main character so and there is some romance in there. It's very interesting. Another book I picked up was Dark Inside by Jen Roberts. Wow. I mean, this book was, it was really, it was dark. It was intense. It was crazy. People beating each other up. It's like, ah, what is going on here? Um, it starts out with an earthquake. And um, okay, so there's several different point of views in this one as well. There's four different point of views, and we get to see across the country different events happening. There are school bombings. There's an earthquake. There's uh, people going crazy and killing each other, and this idea that it's more than just um, nature that's happened here, but something darker has been released because of all of these events or the darkness caused these events to become alive and it's it's really it really is dark there's a lot of I don't I don't really want to say gory scenes but they do fight a lot and there's a lot of killing and murders and I don't know I loved it I gave it five stars and then I read Awakened by Edna Walters And I was a little nervous going into this book as well. I've read a lot of angel stories and angels and demons, and I really have not really found ones that I like as much as... Um, um, but Awakened by Edna Walters, it says most teens turn 16 and get the license to drive, but Lil Falcon gets, a, gets the license to kill demons. Orphaned as a child and raised by her eccentric grandfather, Lil is concerned with surviving high school and is unaware that she's a guardian, a uh, being with superpowers charged with killing demons and protecting humanity. When she meets Bran, a mysterious boy with amazing abilities, his psi energy unlocks her latent powers, but Bran has a secret that can ruin the their growing relationship and the truth she discovers may destroy everything she believes in unless she finds the right balance in love and sacrifice. I was really pleasantly surprised by this book. I started reading it and I was like, oh no, here's another girl with insta love. Um, but I got more out of it than that. I just, I was able to pick this book up and just lay back and relax. Just dove right into it. I like the fact that she's a gypsy. Um, it added that a different element to it. They have powers. She has to go through some training to develop her powers. And, you know, the, the romance was okay. I mean, it wasn't horrible or, I mean, it wasn't overwhelming or anything. But I really liked the fight scenes and everything that was going on in this book. So um, I was just I was just really happy that I came across, that I was off, offered this book to read it. And I thought it was a really good read and I enjoyed it. So... Uh, I ended up giving that four stars, and that's Awakened by Edna Walters. And I'm currently not reading anything right now. I haven't um, picked up anything else. <laughs> One of the next things in my 2BR stack for review, I got Masters of the Veil by Daniel Cohen. And this one does sound interesting. It says, it's from Spencer Hill Press, and it says, uh, there's no I in sorcery. Life can't get much better for Sam Locke. Popular, good-looking, and with a future as a, as a professional football player, every guy at Stanton High School wishes he were Sam. That is, until championship football game, when Sam accidentally links his ancient source of energy, known as the Veil, and, revises, and reveals his potential to become a powerful sorcerer. Sam's dreams are crushed as he is whisked off into the alias crown of community, 
a community of sorcerers who use the veil as a part of their everyday life. Once there, he trains beside a mute boy who speaks through music, an eternal sage who is in the eyes and ears of the veil, and a beautiful girl who's pretty sure Sam's an idiot. So it sounds kind of funny, and I like uh, magical stuff, so um, I don't think I've ever read anything like it, so it's going to be interesting. So that's what I'm going to dig into next, and um, that's about it for now, guys, so thanks for watching.